cool. Hi, everyone. So um, I'm doing my talk, Pipeline Driven Development and Tekton. Why am I here? I had some downtime between projects and I played around with Tekton and I spoke to Brendan a bit and I was telling him all these ideas and he was like, hey, come do a meetup talk on it. So this is kind of some of my thoughts and my findings on Tekton, stuff that I've experimented with and would like to still experiment on. Um, automated a ton of manual tasks that I was uh, struggling with and I really liked uh, the granularity that pipe uh, that Tekton gave for building pipelines and I liked that it was Kubernetes native. I'm Carrie Liebenberg. Hi. I'm a cloud native engineer at Container Solutions. Um, I've chucked in my GitHub uh, URL at the bottom of the slides. Uh, it's there still Carrie ZA if you want to have a look at some stuff. So by day, I do coding things. I like to learn, I uh, like to innovate, I hope. Um, I come from a development background. I'm catching up on the ops layer. Um, I like to do cloud native things and all things cloud. Um, and playing around with Kubernetes and doing modular things. And then by night, I play roller derby and sometimes I try skateboard and it doesn't end so well, but it's still a dream of mine to figure out how to skateboard. So kind of the start of all of this for me was the DevOps journey and um, kind of automating the pain points on projects, helping the teams I worked with to automate those points uh, the desire to keep projects stable, uh, improve releases, make releases faster, but still keep the stability, and bridging that gap between dev and ops that I've brought up. And um, um, sorry, and um, the collaboration between dev and ops is what I meant. And then um, helping out just on projects in general that needed some TLC. Cool. The major um, thing that came across, trying to get rid of those silos uh, with dev and ops collaborating with each other uh, on a lot of projects uh, I worked on, uh, what, we, what ended up kind of happening was in the attempt to get rid of those silos, we kind of created devs that tried to do a lot. They kind of looked the, uh, lost their focus in terms of weren't able to focus on the code, they also tried to take on the ops role. So what I like about Tekton is I think it can kind of bring a bit that abstraction back. Dev sticking with dev focused stuff and sticking to their strengths. And we could perhaps use ops to abstract a bit of the comp complications behind pipeline management. The manual effort has also been um, improved through all sorts of pipeline systems. So not just Tekton, but it's been great to see how we're improving on manual effort on projects. And then automate all the things. So that's also why we're here. So I'd like to just go over some of the existing pipeline uh, structures. CI, CD, CD, GitOps, and automation. <laughs> CD being continuous delivery, and then uh, CD being continuous deployment, so both layers. Git has been a very important layer to all of that. Uh, version control in our code has been has given us a lot of control uh, in terms of the stability that we're craving. Branching strategies, feature branches, environment branches, different things depending on your project and your project's needs. Uh, being able to work on code in isolation and then merge it into the central source, that's been very beneficial. And then other strategies like Git Flow and Git Ops, which I'll get to. Continuous integration, taking a lot of the manual steps that we do to keep the code quality, automated tests, code quality scans, uh, uh, any kind of builds to make sure no ch breaking changes get put into the code. All of these layers now automated um, and quick, quick feedback loops to make sure that if anything breaks, <laughs> <laughs> totally planned. Um, but yeah, um, preventing any breaking changes getting into production, basically. 
And then uh, continuous delivery. Uh, one of the things that come up with uh, continuous delivery, small frequent changes to your releases, making sure you're not uh, having a big backlog of changes that you then throw into production that uh, could then cause a lot of um, stress it's the um, confidence in your releases, making sure that you're releasing code you are comfortable will run in production and um, releasing to your different environments, if that's part of your project strategy and feedback loops. Continuous deployment, uh, getting our code into production automatically, which is great. There's, it's very beneficial. Um, creating those immutable releases, we know that that is the release at that point in time. Um, being able to deploy without human effort, which is great. Then GitOps, which is kind of new, um, depending on how long you've been working with it, um, and originally coined by Weaveworks. It's uh, leveraging what GitHub, or well, Git, sorry, not GitHub, Git actually already gives you. It gives you that commits, pull requests, uh, merges, release tags, being able to re leverage that in a more powerful way. Uh, and uh, one, of the, one of my colleagues described it as um, a commit triggering everything, or the commit being that start point that triggers your pipelines. Another colleague um, believes it's a little bit more than that. It's a bit more a focus. It's got to do also with how you intend the commit to end up. So um, you make a commit, for example, in an, a repo dedicated to managing your operations layer, your uh, infrastructure. And that commit then ends in a result somewhere else. But basically, no one goes in and tweaks this, your environments manually anymore. No SCP and like tweaking around and creating snowflake servers. It's now um, this uh, central source of truth of what you're expecting to happen somewhere else. So almost like state management from Git's layer. And then that also gives a rise to some other strategies of using the commit hash to tag your images so that you always have the point of what image is running. You can go back to the code to map up that um, what you're expecting to see there. Um, and um, there's been some other cool, like having that ops repository instead of uh, chucking your operations there inside of your project. Sometimes there's a, a, a mashup of a project with your ops, your CI and your CD with your application layer. And, and GitOps could kind of create a different strategy for that. And then just automation in general, the little uh, utils that we use uh, to manage pain points on our infrastructure, um, <clears throat> or just in the journey um, investigating things, and there's little utils that you might have on your computer. And you can put that into a pipeline and automate that, uh, set it up with some sort of a trigger, an event trigger that reacts to things that happen in your system where normally you would go in and you would run those scripts manually, we can now actually kind of set up triggers for that or those scripts. Configuration as code and infrastructure as code, giving us that ability to store state in um, Git uh, infrastructure as code, affecting your infrastructure layer that allows us to, um, uh, the infrastructure can be controlled from a code layer um, and then configuration as code, more for the application layer. We can store our applications as a state in Git, which is great. And um, there's, uh, with Kubernetes, we, for example, will store YAML scripts. And then with uh, Terraform, HashiCorp um, configuration language, which is a little bit like JSON, but not quite like JSON. Okay. So some existing pipeline solutions. This is all systems I've already built pipelines with. Azure DevOps, uh, Jenkins, GitLab, um, uh, GitLab for the cloud. I haven't built GitLab locally on a local cluster yet. Well, a cluster that I've controlled. But um, uh, my main effort has been on GitLab cloud. And then recently I've looked at GitHub Actions. And then I just quickly want to mention some different uh, models, the push versus the pull model. So um, the uh, oh, let me just go back one step. I just want to mention, so both there's a, a, your source in Git, and then there's a domain of trust, and that's what you control. That's what you know what's in that domain of trust. You know, you've set up those systems, or your team has set up those systems, and you, you can call it the domain of trust because you trust everything is there based on what you expect to be there. In the push model, um, kind of changes get pushed to your domain of trust. So you've got your changes set in a Git 
somewhere in Git repository. Your changes get decided on perhaps in a VM that's spinned up not by you. You don't know how this VM has been set up. You don't know um, what, there's just a, it's a bit of like a black box. You know what's gonna come out of it and you hope that it's all secure and you hope that it's what is agreed upon to be there and best practices and everything. Um, and then it ends up affecting our domain of trust. The pool model, what's making the changes sits within your domain of trust. So you've got that Git repository, it's triggering something inside of your domain of trust, and that um, then ultimately creates the changes. And so some examples of the push model, GitHub Actions, which sits externally on GitHub, GitLab uh, in the cloud, which you haven't set up. Some examples of the pool model, uh, Tekton, uh, which I like. Uh, GitLab, if you happen to have set it up within your own domain of trust. Jenkins, and there's Argo, which is more continuous deployment focused, um, but it's still within the domain of trust. Okay, getting to Tekton, Tekton now. <laughs> what is Tekton? So it's a cloud native solution. Um, it comes from the Kane native project. It's been taken out and put in its own project now. Um, it's a Kubernetes-style resource for declaring continuous integration and continuous deployment-style pi pipelines, but you can do so much more with it. It has a dependence on Kubernetes, so you can't just set it up somewhere without Kubernetes. Um, it is a CRD, custom resource definition. Um, it extends Kubernetes. The concept behind it, behind Tekton, is that your pipelines become first-class citizens, and um, it follows the pool model that you can set it up within your domain of trust. So just quickly going over the CRD phrase, um, the custom c CRDs allow you to create custom resources and custom resources extend the Kubernetes API. This means if you're using CRDs, um, it allows you to use existing Kubernetes ways of doing things. You can use the Kubernetes verbs, kube control, get, uh, pods, or whatever, but you can do the same thing with uh, the Tekton resources, is you can use kube control to interact with your Tekton resources. Okay, um, Tekton pipelines. I'm just gonna take you through uh, the Tekton pipelines project. There's also Tekton triggers, and there's like a couple of other projects they've created but I'm gonna focus on Tekton pipelines. So there's six basic parts to Tekton, uh, basic types. The step, and um, the step is like the commands you want to run. So for example, you'll tell the step what image to, to use, uh, you give it the step a name, um, you can use the command approach, um, there I've got a cat example, <coughs> and you can use the script approach. And um, so you can put in like your shell scripts or your bash scripts and whatever. And uh, that kind of gives you, you can choose to go declarative or imperative. Like it gives you that same flexibility you would have with some other pipeline systems. Uh, the task the task is actually where the steps live. So the steps are a list of steps that you want to happen. And then the task is like the parent of it. The task will run as a pod in Kubernetes, and steps will run as containers in the task pod on Kubernetes. Oops, one back. Okay, S tasks will just be resources that live in Kubernetes, and you can update them, you can, um, you can use them repeatedly, but a task runs trigger the task, and they have to be uniquely named. They run once, and if you want to run a task, a task again, you have to create a new task run with a unique name again. So uh, what I found worked really well is using name-timestamp uh, as a naming convention um, so that you can always have that unique task run. But you generally won't create tasks run yourself. Uh, I'll explain in a second why. <coughs> but just to show that you have the spec and then task ref, and your task run will reference the task you want to run. Then you've got your pipeline. Your pipeline li lists your tasks. They're a sequential order of tasks you want to run. And um, yes, um, and what's kind of great is you pass in your resources to your pipeline. So for example, there you, it references uh, a GitHub repo. And so that becomes a resource that you pass your pipeline to use, which means you can use 
a pipeline for multiple repos. This is what you would actually interact with, a pipeline run. So same with how a task needs a task run to trigger the task, you need a pipeline run to trigger the pipeline. But then that's going to create a ton of task runs automatically, which will then trigger the tasks. You build pipeline runs same, it's got to be a uniquely named pipeline run. You can use create task runs yourself if you wanted, um, but this is kind of the layer you would more uh, interact with. Generally, you could actually build a tool that would trigger this. So a tool that would automatically build your YAML for your pipeline run to then trigger your system. Um, and this is kind of the level where you actually pass in your resources and your inputs. So uh, everything else will be like kind of like a concept and statically typed and, um, and it's more just schematic. This is where you actually pass in your values so that it can be used amongst your pipeline and your tasks. And then this is uh, what I'm most excited about is the pipeline resources. The, I mentioned before that you can pass in multiple different GitHub repo resources to different pipeline instances. Um, so what this will ultimately allow is that you can have one pipeline and you can have 10 projects with the same steps that you want to run, you just point it to a different repo and um, you can point it to a different image as well. So even your images are like resources that you point to with details. So it can be a Google Cloud um, image source, it can be a Docker Hub image source, it can be what you choose to be. Cool, so um, you can set up continuous integration with Tecton. You can do continuous delivery, you can do continuous deployments. You can do GitOps if you use Tekton triggers. Um, I haven't gone over that here. It's also a cool talk and a cool uh, thing to look into once you've played around with Tekton pipelines. Um, one thing I did make a note to mention here was uh, I kind of see the benefit of Tekton, not necessarily now. There's a lot of groundwork that has to happen if you choose to work with Tekton. It's, <coughs> it's nothing you have to make it into something. Like, it, you're not gonna get something out the box that works nicely. But what I foresee is kind of like the same way that there's Helm and Helm charts and there's predefined things that a community has put together. I kind of imagine Tekton eventually getting these base images, that we can, base pipelines, we call it that. Like, pipelines that someone else has gone and worked out as a best practice and we can kind of all contribute to as a community. So like a library of pipelines and approaches and templates that we can, so Tekton is still very new. There's still a lot of groundwork to do, but like, it could really grow into some cool um, projects. So it's, I did try to ask myself, like, why would I rethink pipelines? Like, we've got all these other existing tools that are already industry best practices. We've got get, um, we've got Jenkins, which most of us have probably worked with, and um, there's uh, like. GitLab is really great. GitLab is a good tool and GitHub is a good. GitHub Actions is now a good tool as well now that they've released it. <laughs> um, but Tekton is Kubernetes native, which means we're using Kubernetes knowledge to manage it. it. That could be a pro or con, depending on where you come from. But I think it's a pro if you've already got a team that is busy learning Kubernetes, has to maintain Kubernetes and manage Kubernetes, now also has to manage pipelines for teams. They can use that existing knowledge to kind of manage with Tekton. It's not like you have to learn Groovy script like you would have with uh, Jenkins, which I mean, some people might really like learning Groovy script. Um, it is fun. It's the pool model, as I mentioned before. You can set it up quite comfortably within the pool model, your domain of trust. Um, I like the flexible architecture. So, images are resources, and um, your, your pipeline resources can be images, they can be. Uh, GitHub repos, but they can also be clusters. Your clusters can also be passed in as like just an object. And then so you can use the same pipelines you've set up against different clusters that you're managing. And that has like kind of like a very, um, a very scalable thought process behind it if you think about it. And um, you can also um, separate what you need by namespaces, which I'll also bring up. <laughs> I mentioned before the idea that you can have a pipeline and, and use it across many projects. Um, that's what I'm most excited for, is that um, if, if we use this model of um, pipeline per project, uh, and I say like pipeline per application, if you've got um, 10 projects 
each with 10 pipelines and you need to update them. Um, it's a different strategy. Like I'm not saying it's a bad strategy. It's just different ways of looking at the same problem and different ways we could tackle the problem or different ways we can tackle a solution. <laughs> it's come from the positive side. <laughs> so it's just different solutions that we can bring um, to projects. And uh, the reusability. So we can kind of reuse pipelines amongst teams. And then um, I brought up before like the manual effort and we've abstracted, we've kind of um, gotten rid of a lot of the manual effort in our projects, uh, but now we're adding mental effort. So uh, it's, it's not to say that people don't want to, the mental effort, it's just we must also be careful not to keep adding mental effort to projects. Like there keeps being a new way of doing things and I know bringing up Tekton is a new way again, but kind of we need to stabilize on the mental effort that we're putting into projects and I think if, if we have this idea of bringing focus back to letting developers perhaps set up projects where they're just passing in the, the pipeline resources, but they're not managing the pipeline per se, the pipeline's already pre-managed by another team, I think we can lessen the mental effort that starts to happen in the teams and maybe we can get those unit tests written, because <laughs> that would be great. Um, and I, I, I think we can kind of get uh, innovation in the ops layer, where ops get <coughs> to be creative, and they get to think of pipelines that are reusable um, in a different way. Again, it's, it's just a different way of looking at it. Um, and we bring that focus back for devs. Um, just some more cool things about Tekton that I liked. Uh, I, I didn't really point out inputs properly before. And I like that you can, um, from the pipeline run side, you can pass down an array of values. For example, if you have a command with a couple flags, you can pass in those flags as an input on your pipeline run. Um, you can also pass in string values to be used, um, like for example, a URL that can be used in your pipeline. Again, passing up from that pipeline run layer and it will go down into the task layer. Some resource types, I've mentioned the Git resource. Um, there's uh, quite a few and it's still being added to and um, improved upon. Um, I, I mentioned the image resource and the cluster resource. This You can also use store, uh, storage resources. And the cloud event resource is what Tekton Triggers uses to allow for the GitOps layer. And then you can also output um, things, uh, artifacts between steps. If one step needs to output something that you need to use in a different step, they've also kept that in mind with being able to share um, artifacts between steps. It's multi-tenant. Um, the, the reason I say that is um, you can control who sees what with RBAC and namespacing. Um, I'll show you in a second um, through the, the Tekton dashboard um, kind of how you can kind of, if your team only has access to certain namespaces, that's all they'll be able to see if your pipeline is running on those namespaces, your pipelines and your Tekton resources that you've assigned to those namespaces. And um, I, I do think Tekton comes within the DevOps vision of trying to create collaboration between the teams again. Um, I, I, I think it brings back the thought of collaboration and not just um, trying to overload yourself with um, a lot of tasks. Trying to take uh, control of your entire project from dev to the ops side. Um, I think I'm, I don't think it brings back silos. I think it still brings back collaboration and back to that spirit of I do my thing well, you do your thing well, let's work together and we'll create a great project together. So I'm just planting a seed. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if it's uh, the final solution yet. I mean, there might be a new tool soon. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. So I'm just putting it out there. I think it's a cool solution. It's, we can do some cool things with it. Um, and um, don't fix something that's not broken. If your teams work well with uh, um, CI and the CD built into the app layer and they understand it and that works for your team, it doesn't have to be changed. Um, Tekton is kind of, I saw it as a solution for where I saw that wasn't working. So um, I'm already thinking of ways that I can use Tekton to solve things that haven't been solved yet. Cool. And then references, 
I've set up a repo, uh, Tekton examples, and I kind of keep adding stuff to uh, GitHub. That's also why I keep mentioning my GitHub account, because um, when I figure things out, I kind of do share it on there, and I just kind of like, now and then I'll do a blog post, but I mostly actually just throw my examples um, on GitHub. Cool, thank you. Um, I'm gonna try a demo. Let's see if this, I did record myself, so if this doesn't work so great, um, we're gonna watch a very long recording. Um, okay, so let's see, let's, I'm gonna try and mirror my screen. I think that's gonna be the best option here. If I can find my mouse. I found my mouse, and uh, I'm just quickly finding my screen settings. Um, displays. Hold on, one second. Bear with me. Cool. Okay. So I'm gonna try to zoom in a bit here. So right now I'm on the default namespace. <coughs> All right, okay, hold on. Um, I'm just quickly, let's make this big too. Wow, I only made the one thing big. Uh, Sorry, technical malfunction. Is that a little bit clearer? Okay. Um, let's start with that. So I've got my Tekton resources set up on the Tekton pipelines. Namespace is just custom out the box. Um, and I'm pretty gonna Grab my pods. Uh, so I've set up the Tekton dashboard, also just following the the tutorial. Um, if you do go to my Tekton examples, I've done ASCII Cinemas recordings of these steps. And I'm just quickly gonna port forward um, this, do I want to, I'm just gonna put it in the new tab quick because it keeps running, okay. Uh, uh, now my brain can't remember commands, just bear with me. <laughs> um, okay. Do, do, do. Is it port dashboard? Yeah, your port, part port. Oh yes, namespace, namespace. Um, okay, cool. It stopped working, obviously. Um, I had it all set up. Okay, so let me just quickly grab my dashboard back. Was it the second one? Yes, there we go, okay. No. Oh, 1997. Why? Okay. Sorry, guys. It's going to get better soon. <laughs> it really will get better. Um, okay. Okay, we have things. <laughs> this is Tekton by, no, I'm kidding. Okay, so this is just a quick little dashboard that, um, uh, that is there just to be a GUI. It's not as great as some of the other GUIs. I think they're still working on it. I, I like it for the visibility, um, but it can still be improved in terms of its UI. Um, I've got all my pipelines on the demo namespace. So this is one of the things I mentioned about like namespace. If I didn't have access to these namespaces, I wouldn't have been able to view them. 
I've created a little CI pipeline that I've been using. Um, and um, I can go into it, I can see I've got like a linting step, test step, some coverage, and then I do a build. I'm gonna quickly run the pipeline now and take you through the resources. It takes about 10 minutes, so I might not be able to show you the actual build, but I can show you past builds, and just trust me that it's gonna get there. Okay. So, first, let me open up the pipeline itself. So I had a private repo that I wanted to test um, Tekton pipelines against uh, because I got public repos working fine, but I, what I really needed was a realistic private repo scenario. It's now like a bit too, is that still legible or so? Okay. okay. Um, So here's my actual pipeline that I've set up. It's a CI Node.js. It's a Node.js project that I set up somewhere that I, I tried to run a pipeline against to see if it can add value to an existing project that I've got. I pass in um, the path to the Docker file for the Kaneko build, um, path to context of, and an image tag. Um, I'm hard coding the image tag right now. I'm not doing like a fancy commit hash Linking, it's just hard coded for now. I pass in the, the GitHub repo and the GCR image details. The, the resources I've set up, it's a private repo on our company uh, repository. Um, I used GitHub authentication details to get in there. And then I've got uh, a Google Cloud, uh, Google Container Registry details there, and I used uh, Google's uh, service account JSON credentials to set that up. And then I've, I've split out steps for myself, uh, a build step uh, that will build the image using Kaneko so there isn't root ha um, access happening, and uh, run some coverage steps, uh, code coverage, code linting, and uh, run the tests. So I'm quickly gonna trigger this using the pipeline run. Uh, I've got customized in there just to uh, kind of solve the consistency between the, the namespaces for me. And um, yeah, so I, I kind of do this manually right now, but there are better ways to do this. This is just a POC of a POC. Um, And so you would apply changes, because this is um, a pipeline run, it's unique, it's got a unique name, that's why I had to manually change it quick, but you can automate that. Um, I'm applying it with uh, the minus K uh, flag so that it can use the customize, so just like you would with other Kubernetes resources, or in it, use the namespace. Uh, sorry? Missing the S on your directory. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Hey. Hold on. Hold on. I know what's going on. Here. Uh, I did this earlier. Okay. So it's actually the runs folder. Okay. So now um, it's created the pipeline run. The pipeline run is triggering, uh, checking your pipeline, and then it's going. Okay. Cool. I've got all these tasks I need to run, and I've got these steps in the tasks. So it's going to spin up a pod for each task and it's gonna spin up containers for in each pod. Um, so if I go, let's use this guy. Okay. So this is the other thing. There's some like log rotation you'll have to build into the system if you use Tekton, because it really does clutter up like the data. But, um, I've kind of just been going, um, uh, what was it, was it 48? This is going well. Okay, 
so it's got um, it's got your steps. So I'll go back quickly to the code, and I'll go to my um, CI pipeline. Uh, see here, it's got I've named it like a step one Node JS lint, um, step two Node JS test, step three Node JS coverage, and so on. It's got those same corresponding steps here: the the lint, the test, the coverage, the build. I can interact with these similar to what I would um, with pods. So if I want to investigate what is happening in the pod, I can, for example, just grab the pod. I'm just going to spit out all the logs from all the containers um, and I'll kind of... Um, Is Sorry, <laughs> must be. Okay, I should have saved all these out, but yeah. Um, okay, there we go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so now I can do that with all of the parts. So we've got all all of those four parts, spit out all the logs. Um, but I'm going to jump to the GUI because that's just going to be visually easier for us. So here we can see our, uh, the pipeline run that I just triggered is still in the process of running. And um, the different steps, except for the build, which is gonna take about 10 minutes to finish off. Um, but yeah, so that the, you can see the logs here. You can also see details of the task that you ran, which is handy if you're debugging and you wanna see what you've done. There's some like code coverage that I just spat out um, just for just to see if I could do this kind of stuff with Tekton. And yeah, so um, what will then happen, and I'm, I'm not gonna make you sit here for 10 minutes watching the thing spin, <laughs> um, but it's gonna tag, um, Kaneko is gonna build a container for me, I mean an image for me. It's gonna tag it with the tag I provided in the <coughs> params, um, which um, like I said, it can be a commit hash. It doesn't have to be hard coded the way I've done it. And um, then it's going to end up here. It's going to push it here, which then I can use to run wherever I want. I wanted to do a continuous deployment uh, demo as well, but time happened, life happened, and I hope the, that pipeline kind of shows where it can lead and where it can go. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you. That is my talk. Thanks for coming. <laughs>
um, because you can do almost similar things with jobs and you can still have your auditability with jobs. So I'm not sure why they chose pods over jobs. Okay. I still want to investigate that actually. Okay. Cool. Cool. Any other? Oh, yeah. If, if the steps are uh, containers in a pod, <coughs> sequence random then, or is there a sequence of steps? Um, the tasks. I just missed this post. I don't know if I'm going to be too loud. Uh, the tasks seem to run um, at the same time, yeah. but the steps seem to be sequential. So, like step, and then it goes into the next thing, and the next thing. I could be corrected, but that's what I've experienced so far. Um, so, yeah, I think that's how it kind of has been planned. So, your, your tasks will kind of run parallel to each other unless you've explicitly stated that you want them to wait. There are some other cool things you can do in the YAML. You can put conditionals in there, like only do this if something else has happened and stuff. And I think you might be able to do stuff like s controlling more explicitly the, the order of uh, tasks. So you were talking about triggers, right? Uh, that you can add onto this and get onto flow. Um, are the triggers also developed by Tekton's team or like a third party thing that can solve? No, it's still Tekton. So it's the, the same team that's running Tekton pipelines, is running Tekton dashboard, and it's running Tekton triggers. Um, I haven't seen any other involvement. I mean, it's community involvement, so it's open source or whoever. But I think it's still driven by the same people. Yes. Can you give us any hints about debugging pipelines? So um, the big mass of pipelines is um, often when they are not working, and you have to debug them, um, you, have to, you have to do it in place somehow, so you access their hints. So yeah. while I was uh, debugging stuff, I mean, I did some stuff that was like <laughs> probably not best practice, like commenting out tasks so I could isolate a task and just <coughs> test why that yeah. one task is not working. Um, but I was thinking uh, with the conditional stuff, we can start adding um, if in debug mode, run this with that. Like, I think if we start wanted to, I don't, I don't know if that's going to add more complexity and more clutter to it, um, but we could run that, for example, in a Ops dev, like not, not a, yeah. like a, a dev ops environment, um, not the, the dev ops phrase, I just mean like it's our development environment for our operations procedures. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can test it out before we move it to our actual ops layer where um, we could have debug pipelines. I think th it also was something I was excited to explore further. I haven't uh, debugged it too thoroughly yet um, in terms of that. I, I did do a couple like echoes and like. Uh, tests like that, but those aren't, I mean, they just, they probably made my life more difficult than easy, but I think we can strategize with some nicely thought out debug steps. I also think it might be easier because you're running essentially Docker containers inside Kubernetes, right? So if you've got a step called a lint and it, it does some, does something, you could literally run that same Docker image, whether it's locally, whether it's in Kubernetes, so it's much easier to debug because it's, because Docker makes it all yes. portability, isolation sort of thing, right? So I think you could probably isolate it. Yeah. In theory, I think. In theory, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. In theory, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. And you always have a log again, so. Um, Sorry? You always have the logs uh, in the afternoon, so you can see uh, yeah. what's wrong, so what, what's yeah. been read. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, you do always have those logs, they don't get destroyed. Um, they stay there, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, you are going to have to do some cleanup uh, eventually because um, it's you. You can see it's, it becomes very verbose. The more steps you have and the more sys pipelines you <coughs> build, we're just going to have all these like logs collecting everywhere. So there'll need to be some sort of strategy for that. So maybe one question: um, and there, um, Is there any possibility, for instance, for debugging purposes, um, to keep the <coughs> instance running? So, um, no, so I can go I and understand. Um, after all is done, the um, container just vanished. And if you can run it for debugging, it's possible. The only thing I can think of to do that, which is a very nasty way of doing it, is to put a sleep in there yes. and just like, keep it awake. Okay. Um, I see. Uh, but I haven't seen anything that will. Br I don't think Tekton designed it to be able to do that. Like I don't. I, don't th I think they intentionally left it that the, once the pod is done, it's done. Um, but I think they give you enough freedom that if you want to force it to stay awake, you can put one or two steps and commands in that are like a little bit like hacky, but they kind of help you with what you need it for. Okay. okay. And then in the sorry, oh. last question, I guess in the in the aftermath of things, if you're running hundreds of pipelines a day, 
which would then just automate some cleanup, which would remove some of those jobs. So, because if you, if you, as I saw it, if you keep running jobs and keep running pipelines, it'll keep building up and building up, and every time you do get parts, it'll be more and more and more. Um, would you just do clean up on that to go keep the last ten or twenty or? keep the last yeah. three days or so you could set up stuff like that uh log rotation was something i wanted to look into next like kind of strategies for that uh, in general just for like kubernetes maintenance as well um i wouldn't i would move it somewhere else like to an archive i wouldn't delete them because that's that's your auditability like that's that makes your <coughs> pipelines and your changes auditable if you get rid of those then you've got no audit of what you've been doing on your system so that's the only thing is yes you could set it up just don't delete stuff move it somewhere like archive it okay. so there is another tool called cleanup operator so you can install it inside your Kubernetes cluster and you can say like hey uh, I, I need to uh, keep this job what is uh, the duration is last 24 hours or okay. more than that so it will keep only this container otherwise it will clean the previous container automatically okay. Okay. nice a log rotator. It's yeah. called cleanup operator. Cleanup operator. Okay, yeah. cool. I'll look into that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody. I think I'm out of time. Bye. Okay. <laughs>